parents hugging, and you think about the moms and the mothers and all the heritage that even within here. Uh, God is awesome. We serve an awesome God. Awesome is supposed to be the word that is just used for God, but I can't find any other bigger word than awesome. Amen. Joy zone. Joy zone. Children dismissed to the joy zone. Looks like a lot of joy going out there. Look, they're skipping and running. And...
She hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got him a wicker basket, covered it over with tar and pitch. And she put the child to it and set it out, set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. Wow. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> On a great start. Pastor, you think you can cheer us up a little bit? First of all, let me just tell you guys right here, okay? First of all, every mother loves her children, okay? Loves their children. Enough to do a couple things that, that we can see that are put right here in words. We know that Pharaoh was having all the babies killed. Can you imagine? You have a child, you carry that child for nine months, and then all of a sudden, bam, you have this child delivered. It's a boy. The soldiers come rushing in. See, it's a boy. They tear him out of your arm and take him out to the Nile and throw him in there for the crocodiles. And the other animals to eat, drown that baby child. I can't imagine what that must have been like. You know, I just can't fathom that happened. So this mother, Moses' mother, loved her child so much that she was willing to do some things that would possibly have cost her her life. So, first of all, notice that she said that her child was beautiful. Verse 2, the woman conceived for her son, and when she saw that, he was beautiful. Now, I don't know how moms do it. But being a pastor, I'll just be honest, with confession is good for the soul, but bad for the reputation, okay? I have been to the hospital, and I've seen some babies, and I go, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> wow. And then they come in and say, isn't that beautiful? I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> beautiful. You know, the head's all misshaped and everything. They just got, um, that, they just come out and that, that's, ooh. And a mom going, oh, so beautiful. And, you, ooh. Okay. and then they start to grow. Okay? And then they start to grow. And we have the, the internet phase now that every time a child does something, they go, oh, it's such a pretty snip. Put it out on the line. Okay? Look, there's Johnny. Look at him. It's so cute. He's so beautiful. And you know everybody else going, yeah, only a mother's love. <laughs> only a mother's love thinks that child beautiful. But every parent, every mother especially <laughs> thinks that their child is beautiful. The next thing I want you to understand that a mother will do, they will protect them. She takes this child, she protects him and hides him for three months. For three months. I can't imagine that. You know, babies cry. Today, there's some babies in here, and I guarantee you, before the service is over, one of them will be crying. If not, all three of them, because I think it's contagious. <laughs> Unless, like some of you adults in here, I've been known to put adults to sleep quite often. <laughs> I'll start preaching and they go. Same thing happens to babies. I don't know what it is. It's out of my voice. Just smooth and calm. So anyway, we protect them, don't we? I, you know, they say that a, a, a bear mama is something not to mess with. You know, uh, not like there's a bunch of bears around here, but they're starting to come back. And they say, hey, if you run into a thug bear, you better run. Because a mama bear is around there and going to protect them. Well, let me tell you this. If you have not been to the city park and watched a mama go crazy over a swing set that their child thought they had, a mother bear has got nothing on some ladies in this community. I just tell you that right now. They will protect that child. They'll protect that swing. And they will go off on you. You have better not say anything. But let me tell you this, parents, moms. The moment you have that child, your life has changed. You have better protect that child. God has put that child in your life for a reason. It's not by accident. It might have surprised you, but it didn't surprise God. And all of a sudden, you've got to protect that child. That means things like this. That means you need to protect what goes into their mind. Amen. You need to protect what their little eyes will see. Amen. You need
You need to protect them from what goes into their bodies. And I, 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 if you're busy today, I'll just go ahead and tell you right now, I'm not sorry. I just try to speak the truth. Hey, listen to me. Some of these parents put these childs in outfits that they don't belong in. Okay? My, my wife says this. I wonder if they have a full length mirror at home. Hey, listen, it's a child. Don't dress it up like an adult. Amen. Okay? Protect that child. Put them in clothes and let, let them be a child. Amen. You need to protect them. Don't dress them into being an adult. They don't need, they need to develop their minds. You talk to anybody in psychology, they can tell you. They need to protect that mind and develop that mind. Don't rush them into being an adult. Don't be putting makeup on them when they're six years old. Amen. Okay, that's a child. Let them go out there and climb a tree. <laughs> Let them play with baby dolls and Barbies and things like that. Okay? Let them, G.I. Joe's, there's nothing wrong with that stuff. But let them have an imagination. Don't try to create them into the imagination of the world that they don't need to be in. Because then what happens, let me tell you, this is not my notes and I'm not going to charge anything extra for it. But here's the deal. You teach your child to dress like an adult at that age, guess what? They're going to think that perfection is the only way that they're accepted. Amen. That means whenever they meet a young boy, they're going to take a little time acceptance. Now young boy starts paying a little bit of attention to them. You need to be careful. Protect them. Protect them just like Moses is going to do. The next thing a mother will do is she'll trust God. You see, I can't imagine this. My goodness, I really can't imagine this. Can you imagine you as a mother having a child knowing, okay, first of all, if they find Moses here, they're going to throw him into the Nile. But the mom made a basket. I just kind of imagine this is a process, and this is just my, my, my mind thinking. Just uh, leaving a basket and making that basket and saying, yeah, that's about the size of Moses. That's, he's three months old now. That's about the size of he is right there. So that, that'll work. And, you know, I, I want to make it buoyant so it won't see. So then we'll put some tar and pitch in there. And we'll coat that. And maybe you can go over and practice putting Moses in there. Okay, yeah, it fits in that. We better make sure it doesn't sink. So we need to sneak out to the Nile River and go out and put it on top of some water and make sure it's not going to sink. Okay, the boat floats. The little basket floats. So let's put Moses in it and make sure he doesn't capsize it. You know what I'm saying? To put it in there, kind of do that. Wow. Could you imagine that, moms? Could you imagine taking Moses and then actually saying, All right, God, I'm going to trust you right here now. I'm going to put little Moses in this basket. And I've got to put him out in the water. And I'm going to keep him close to the shore. Maybe someone will find him. But God, I know you. You know where he's at in this water. And I'm going to. That. Let me tell you, moms, you do that just about every day. <laughs> Let me tell you about Valerie's first day of school. Valerie's always been that grown up adult, you know, little, little girl would put her in that dress. Trisha, I think Trisha might have had a broken leg at the time. Her first day of kindergarten. Mallory, I'm determined she wanted to ride the bus. And Trisha was like, no, we're riding. We're going to take you to school. And she's like, no, I want to ride the bus. And so we walk down to the bus stop. <laughs> bus comes. She gets on. Guess what? We sprinted back to the car to get the car to beat the bus back to the school. <laughs> so when she got off of that bus, we were there. We was watching. You know, but we, we were just hoping she got put in a good seat that no... No older kids is going to take advantage of her or make fun of her or scare her off or anything like that. So we had to let her go out into the night. Guess what? She ended up graduating. All right, you got to find a job or go to college. So she goes off to college, and guess what? We were worried to death. We started packing that stuff down to her dorm room, the little refrigerator, her clothes and everything. And it's like, all right, we're going to let you go out to the Nile. We're going to put our trust in God. He's going to look over it. Guess what? God brought her back. Then you got to get a job. All right, you're going to trust you, Lord. You, you gave her an education. We're going to put you out 
the world, real world, God, take advantage of her. Just you just use her in the way you want to use her. But God, we're going to release her out to you. We're trusting her right now. I'm keeping an eye. You know, as I as I do, in each one of them scenarios, there's crocodiles in that water waiting just to devour them. And you as a parent, you gotta trust God. Amen. You gotta put your hand. I remember Valerie got that car, she was like super genius but at times her mind would be thinking about other things and one time she, sorry Valley, wherever you're at she pulled out in front of someone and I was like, go, 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 we're going this side don't get t and go, 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 go <laughs> literally she got her driver's license and I went out and put my hand just like I did the boys' cars too, don't think they're dead alright, 16 year old boy in a car, but anyway I went out and I, and I put my hands on my cars and my children Trust me, look, I put, I put my hand on the car and I said, God, you know my child driving this car. They mean the world to me. Protect them and bring them back safely to me. I had to put them out into the Nile. The cake out for years. For years. I can't imagine how hard that must have been for her. I will put something in your Bibles right there. We're going to come back to that. Turn, I, I read this in, in our dedication. But look at Proverbs 22 6. If you go to Psalms, you can find Proverbs just right after that. Pretty much in the middle of your Bible. Proverbs 22 6. Okay, 
maybe tomorrow. We're going we're to let Moses go tomorrow. Tomorrow. No. You know what I think happened? I think she started praying. And I'm thinking that she put faith into her actions. You know what? Look at Hebrews. Go to, go to something that's called the Hall of Faith. That's chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11. Let, let's, let's look here. Let's just see exactly what, what the Bible tells us about that. Hebrews chapter 11 is called the Hall of Faith. And it has different people throughout the Bible that is explained as far as being faithful. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents. Because they saw he was beautiful, I was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's evil. You see that? Faith. You know what, parents, listen to me. Sometimes you've got to trust that child. Sometimes you've got to trust God. Sometimes you've got to let go and let them make their own decisions. They had the faith to say, hey, I'm going to trust you, God. And here's the thing. They weren't afraid. Parents, listen to me. Fear can hinder your relationship with your child. Well, I don't want to let you go. I want to make all the decisions for you. Before too long, that child resents you because they were saying, hey, you're holding me back. I'm an adult. I'm 19 years old. I'm 20 years old. I'm 35 years old. Let me make all the decisions. Well, I'm 50. <laughs> the Bible does say, I'm your father and mother. You never have to kind of stop me. Don't be afraid to trust. Hey, you put the work into that child, turn him over to God. Turn him over to God. That's what Moses' mom did. Let's see how the rest of that story worked out. Let's see how this worked out for Moses' mom. Go back to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. You want to see how God works? This is amazing. Okay? Let me just read this for you. Exodus chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. His sister stood at a distance to find out what would happen to him. Now, if that was my family, my sister would put the rocks in the bottom of that basket. <laughs> you just say, okay. I said, Mom, you did the test. Keep going on. <laughs> I got stories. All right, verse 5. Hey, that's a side note. That was that. Verse 5. Look at verse 5. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to, the, to bathe at the Nile with her maidens walking alongside the Nile, and she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid, and she brought it to her. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the boy was crying. And she had pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Then her sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for, him, for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go ahead. So the girl went and called the child mother. Verse 9. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. Bam! That's God. Hey, let me tell you this. I can imagine. Let's just go back to the side of the Nile River. You know, the side of the Nile River. And Moses' mom is going. She said, God, i got to trust you. I, I'd like to keep him with me, but I can't hide him any longer. He's getting pretty big. We're going to have to let him go. God, i put him in your hands. Here he goes. And so, just along, and then Pharaoh's out of fire. I can tell you one thing. I'm just saying this right there. I, I don't know if Moses' mom ever thought, well, God, if, if you are God, go ahead and let me raise him, and I'll nurse him. So, guess what? The little girl, his sister, says, well, I'll go get someone to nurse him for you and raise him for you. It'd be okay, all right? You know, back then they nursed sometimes up to about 11 years old. <laughs> they didn't have pasteurized milk. <laughs> Think about it for a second, all right? So anyway, the, 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 
they could nurse that long. I'm not saying he did, but it could have happened. All right. But anyway, so what happened was, I go get his mom, and you know, I just kind of imagine she's sitting in the room going, "Oh my goodness, I wonder what happened to him." The crocodiles get him, or there's some fish in there. There's something going on. And someone get him, find him, and sink him, and clear him in the Nile. What's going on? And then, mom, guess what? Pharaoh's daughter found him, and she wants you to nurse him. Come on, get your stuff, let's go. And so they, she goes, oh God, you saved my baby. And she runs down to him and says, Pharaoh's daughter, I bet there's no way that Pharaoh, or that Moses' mom thought this would happen. Hey, here's what I'm going to do. You nurse this child, I'm going to pay you. What? Every other Hebrew male child but those that you're going to pay me to raise my own child? That's only God! Amen. Only God can make that happen. My goodness, I can look at some of your mother's faces out there going, Why ain't I, why ain't I getting paid? <laughs> if you do my children, God ought to be paying me somehow. <laughs> Don't laugh, you know you thought about trying to follow that. Amen. Think about those miracles. Those good ones, you know, not those ones that you have to do the whooping dance, you know. <laughs> you have other arms go around in a circle. <laughs> but the kind when you remember that child and they just brought so much joy to you. Remember, Rev, where are you at, Rev? The first time you said, Mom, hmm. I bet you it's very easy. My name is, I had some tears going down. Right Remember that time whenever they're on the football, they win the NFL Super Bowl, and they said, I love you. Love you. Poor old dad, you kicked to the curb. <laughs> Mom said, oh, he mentioned me, didn't think about you. <laughs> All them hours you slid out in that yard throwing that football with him. Guess what? Said, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to, to Gail this morning. Uh, we talk about prom and things like that. Listen to me, men. Your daughter has got you wrapped. That's just the way it works. You have that little girl and she just wraps and she, you become just a piece of puzzle. Right? Molded. Oh, she's got to do Okay. But listen, Mom. That little boy. Ha, ha, ha. They got you right there. They can pluck those horse trees whenever they want. <laughs> Mama, please. Mama, please. And you go, oh, and you're getting paid. <laughs> you are rich, God's finished. I can tell you this. Uh, Trish and I have been married. Five years old. I watched my mom. I watched my wife. I can tell you there's times that my, my family and my mom didn't need me because we didn't have enough meat to go around. She sacrificed. I can remember my wife saying, I'm just not really hungry today. I didn't. And I said, Trish, you didn't want to eat? She said, I just didn't feel like eating today. I just, my stomach kept saying, find out we didn't have enough food. I can tell you this, I can tell you the time my mom, my wife had sacrificed the garments that they wear to make sure their children had good clothes. Shoes on their feet. I can tell you parents that moms that sacrifices the, the lost hours of sleep alone Wait and see those headlights pull into the driveway. And well, they're finally home, I can go to bed. Getting up and giving them that extra push, saying, hey, you gotta go to school, you gotta get an education. So they might, by the time you get home late, by the time they get up early to make sure you're up and ready to go, they lose long hours of sleep. 
not counting the hour of prayer, but then saying, hey, please pray for little Johnny, God. Have your hand upon him. Mom, she makes some big sacrifices. Trust me. You are rich. God's given you this ability to have a child. Just the conception part's a miracle in itself. And they grow up and they might be just like you or they might be opposite of you. But you know what? They're part of you. Amen. And so you are rich. You are getting paid. They love you and you love them. And then how to do it all over again? We know you would sacrifice once again. And you know you would. You might do some things a little bit different. You might not. But you love them because that's the child that God gave you to raise. Amen. My question here today is this. If you're sitting here today, there's no greater gift that you can give to your parents than to trust Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Your parent might be here, they're probably a Christian and they would love us but not only just the years here on the earth to be proud of you but also the years in heaven and say hey I'm going to spend my time with my parents Amen. I'm pretty sure God won't put your house right beside theirs <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding but let me tell you your parent wants you to spend eternity with us why not trust them today how about this Maybe you are a parent. You're sitting here today to honor your child. There's no greater gift than you can give to your, your child. Say, so, you know what? You have set the example for me. I'm going to trust Jesus today. I'm going to ask him to come into my heart. I'm going to serve him. What a wonderful Mother's Day gift that would be. Amen. My question today is, do you know him? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Today you can step out there in the invitation time. You can come forward and say, hey, Pastor, I'm going to trust Jesus today. We'll have someone walk you to another room. Let you make that decision. We do not want to embarrass <laughs> anybody at all. We would never do that in this kind of church. Let you make that decision. Maybe you're looking for a church home. We'd love to have you be a part of this church, to worship the Lord here, be a part of this family. Grow right here with us. Just come forward and say, hey, I want to be a member of this church. Once again, I'm going to walk you to another room. Let you make that decision. No pressure. Maybe you want to come to the altar and pray and say, God, you know what? Thank you for my mom. Thank you for my parents. Hey, we did all right. Dude. They might not be here with you. But they still put the word of God in your heart. Do you know what that is? Is there a decision you can make? Let's pray. Father God, I come to you right now.